Okay, hey everybody. Um, I want to just kind of bring some out for you guys. Um, there's a colonel, lieutenant colonel, on YouTube. I've been watching him for a while, and um, we're going to show you what he said about the architecture of the military in the United States and how he's never seen this type of architecture before with foreign troops on our soil. Hundreds of Marines came to shore at Camp Pendleton, and not just Americans. Marines and sailors from countries like Chile, New Zealand, Canada, and Japan. They hit the beach together for Dawn Blitz, a multinational training exercise. Assaulting onto the shore, and they're going to rapidly move through the beach. Pretty impressive, a display of international military might. Thousands of men and women from several different countries all landed on Camp Pendleton's beaches today. It's all part of a multinational exercise called Dawn Blitz. New at 5, 10 News reporter Joe Little was on the beach during that exercise and reveals why training alongside other countries has become part of the U.S. military's way of life. I'm breaking new laws. I'm at, I'm at, I'm at this time. Yeah, I am not. This is public owned property sir, and I am not trespassing. Sir, look, I'm asking you to leave. I'm All right, and what law am I violating by standing here? Trespassing. This is public property. This is city property. This is city property owned by the public and I'm breaking no laws. Right, well now, I'm telling you to leave. Why is that? I'm telling you to leave. And give me a reason for that. He's never seen this type of architecture before with foreign troops on our soil. And uh, he also talks about an offshore nuclear attack with a, a nuclear device put in the ocean off the East Coast. You might remember the Justin Messenger series from 2008. Um, and we'll put that in and show you what's on the U.S. currency. There is an image of a tidal wave covering a seven-story building. I, I tried to show you guys a long time ago um, what was coming, and now a Lieutenant Colonel has come out and confirmed that that's what the plans are of the enemy. This right here, this represents the direction, you know, of the movement because it's coming out of the water. And so this is the whole missile right here, and this is the water bleeding off the top. And this shows the direction that it's going up. I'll just lay this one right on top of it. And there it is, right there. So it's a cruise missile coming out of the water. And then if we fold this the other way, we have the image, the tidal wave, coming over the seven-story building. Well, out of the sea, which is the ocean, shall come fire and smoke, which is a nuclear explosion, and a devouring wind, which is a nuclear explosion. Water, as high as the walls of Jerusalem, will cover the city by the sea. Well, this is really interesting. That's a tidal wave. Well, if you look at the $10 bill, it has a tidal wave covering a seven-story building. Well, this is really amazing. When the Lord gave me that utterance, I had no idea how high the walls of Jerusalem are. They're approximately 72 feet. <laughs> wow. Which is a seven-story building. <laughs> wow. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, so uh, the, wall, yeah, the walls of Jerusalem is basically the height of a seven-story building, which is exactly what's on the $10 bill when you make a pentagram and turn it upside down. You know, they're, they're changing the bills because they're telegraphing their plans. Satan always telegraphs his plans. It's part of the cabal. They have to do it. Satan always announces his plans before he does it. And show you what's on the U.S. currency. There is an image of a tidal wave covering a seven-story building. I, I tried to show you guys a long time ago what was coming, and now a lieutenant colonel has come out and confirmed that that's what the plans are of the enemy. I want to read something to you. It's by Marcus Tilius Cicero. And it says, a nation can survive its fools and even the ambitious, but it cannot survive treason from within. An enemy at the gates is less formidable, for he is known and carries his banner openly, but the traitor moves amongst those within the gate freely. His sly whispers, rustling through all the alleys, heard in the very halls of government itself, for the traitor appears not a traitor, 
He speaks in accents familiar to his victims. He wears their face and their arguments. He appeals to the baseness that lies deep in the hearts of all men. He rots the soul of a nation. He works secretly and unknown in the night to undermine the pillars of the city. He infects the body politic so it can no longer resist. A murderer is less to fear. The traitor is the plague. Okay, guys, welcome to the USA. And welcome to the abomination that causes desolation. Your enemy is within you. And in the prophetic utterance also from 2008, it says, Behold, the, the abomination of desolation shall rise within the walls of the temple to destroy the temple. Within the walls, that same utterance says, For mighty is your enemy that has risen from within your own borders. By the way, that was before Mr. Obama became president. So, do what you want with it. Um, we're going to put that information together with Mr. Paterak and let you guys decide for yourself what time you're living in. And uh, I would encourage everybody to make a decision for Christ and um, go to BeforeTheFire.com if you need some more information on this and watch the full presentation. And that's it. Thank you. So. UN troops are here, Russian troops are here, Ukrainian troops are here, Polish troops are here, German troops are here, Italian troops are here, and Mexican troops are here. Chinese troops on the west coast, okay? And they're having a huge naval exercise with the Russians, you know, some kind of a joint exercise, which is really kind of different, especially this type. Take for the fact, like I said at the beginning of this, that because I'm concerned about the architecture I see, that is important. It is new news to see the architecture that I'm seeing, the deployments, the type of training that they're receiving. You know, a lot of this uh, mount training may not even be U.S. troops. They may be foreign troops dressed in UN or U.S. uniforms or, or similar looking uniforms. I got that indication when I saw this drill in North Carolina where the guy was not allowed to approach. And I mean, you shouldn't approach Blackhawks anyway, it's dangerous. But the, the way that those guys kind of fumbled around coming off those choppers, they're not familiar with what they're doing. This, this, is, this is not, these are not American troops. I, I'd almost be willing to bet on it. Now, most Russian spetsnaz, those types of people, they are trained in many multi-languages. So that's very likely what we're seeing here. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure how that's going to work out. I wasn't there. Again, I'm putting this together with, with the pieces of the puzzle. We had the information come out. Actually, Conservatives Prime and I had a had a somebody sent us some information about this Russian FEMA agreement like a week and a half ago, and we thought it was you know bogus initially, and then we started seeing more information. And of course, it came out in the news. So we're really you know we actually sat on something we shouldn't have, but the source didn't look good. The point is is that we've been we've been correct on that as well. Okay, so all of that out of the way, these troops are here. They're not coming. I'm sure more are. They are here. Okay, now the next information I'm going to give you is from a scientific source who has access to other information as well, government and otherwise. And actually, I emailed him this morning asking if we could talk more about it. But, you know, it's the day before the 4th, and I don't know if he's even available. He did tell me that if that I could release this information, uh, under certain circumstances. Um, so you know who you are and forgive me if I've jumped the gun, but I'm looking at the information here and you'll understand sort of why I'm going to bring this up now. Okay, we had Coast Guard District 7 basically stand down. They did only emergency calls there for the last few months. You remember that. Uh, during one of the exercises they had during that time period was when the two FBI agents were, were killed by an accident falling out of a helicopter. Remember, they were investigators in the Boston bombing and maybe they knew something that their bosses didn't want them to know or, or get out. Regardless, you see that that time frame there, there was, there was very little activity by the Coast Guard in the, on the East Coast Atlantic region, District 7. Now, Fukushima, the Japan earthquake. You know, we heard a lot of things about uh, being able to uh, possibly uh, cause an earthquake and then a tidal wave or a tsunami to create coastal havoc. 
okay? A lot of people were talking about that when the Fukushima thing came. And if it was set off by a nuclear weapon, sub-ocean floor, in what they call an ocean crack in the continental shelf, the, the, the radiation leak from Fukushima would cover any radiation that came out. Now, they're not exactly the same. From a nuclear weapon, it's a little different than from a, a nuclear facility, but the idea of radiation being monitored would be covered. There are quite a few, you know, I don't know exactly where they are right now. I haven't looked it up. I'm doing this in a hurry. There are some nuclear facilities on the East Coast. Okay, I told you before that with all the training that was going on in port cities, it looks like something's going to happen in a port city. Remember I told you that before. Okay, so this is where it goes. This is what the deal is with this scientist. Using a nuclear device in a sub-ocean floor crack, you could cause a significant earthquake, which, as we saw in Japan, could then cause a significant tsunami, which could do a great deal of damage to a coastal area. It'd be mass oh, because fault. Maybe you've heard of it. Yes, it's the joining together of two land masses. The fault line is unstable and shifting, which is why you get earthquakes in California from time to time. Wonderful. Couldn't have said it better myself. Everything west of this line is the richest, most expensive real estate in the world. San Diego, Los Angeles, San Francisco. Everything on this side of the line is just hundreds and hundreds of miles of worthless desert land. It occurs to me that a 500 megaton bomb planted at just a proper point would, uh, would destroy most of California. Millions of innocent people would be killed. And the West Coast as we know it would fall into the sea. Bye-bye, California. Hello, new West Coast, my West Coast. So much so that it would look like a natural disaster, even though it's man-made. Any radiation would probably be mass because it's out in the ocean, number one. Number two, if it's done near any nuclear facilities that could be affected, they could blame any nuclear radiation on those facilities being damaged. This is for real. This is a scientist with government contra contacts, who's worked in this field for many years, who's verified by the seismic occurrence at Fukushima, also the underground tests in North Korea and some other things, that the Fukushima thing was very likely, most likely, an underground nuclear weapon, a man-made event. And he, the information he's given us, leads me to believe, I'm not saying this is a fact, remember intel is fluid, and you have to change with the circumstances, you have to be flexible. I do believe, with the information I have, that this fits all of the pieces in the puzzle. The shutdown of Coast Guard District 7, the port security drills that we've seen with the, with the helicopters and all of that. The deployment of the troops, mostly on the, west, on the east coast. We have some also in California, uh, as you know, especially at Camp Pendleton. The point is, natural disaster is prob a man-made natural disaster is probably going to happen as the reason to deploy these troops. They're all, they've already left their staging areas, I mean their training areas, for staging areas. I don't know if you know the difference. And then from there they can be deployed. That has already occurred, and that again was that stuff that happened between June 21st and 26th. So they're in place now to do whatever they're going to do. Now, if they do do this at Atlantic sub uh, uh, undersea crack continental shelf device in there to cause an earthquake and a tsunami, we're going to see devastating destruction on the east coast along the port cities. Perfect scenario for the training that's happened. Am I telling you if you live along the eastern seaboard on the coastal area you should get the hell out? That, I, I have to leave that up to you. But I at least would be aware that this event that happened in, in Japan and Fukushima isn't far-fetched. It is a what, what would be termed a weather weapon. Okay? A weather weapon tactic. So I don't know if that is going to be the event, but like I said, all of the all of the evidence suggests that that would probably be the case.
take this information and try to verify anything in your area that might lend credence to it and just be aware and if you feel like the danger is real and present take the appropriate actions okay you can only be wrong once because then you, the lives of you and your family are lost it would be it would be it would be better to err on the side of caution